Multiple sclerosis is a neurological condition that shuts down the body by attacking the nerves and it affects over 100,000 people in the UK alone. Unfortunately, doctors still don't know what causes it and because of that, research into the condition is very slow. My granddad has lived with MS for 50 years and whilst treatment has come a long way in that time, there's still a long way to go until we have a cure. Having raised £3,500 for the MS Society through my summit attempt of Mount Kilimanjaro, I've decided to go on a journey to meet the people this money will help and find out new ways to get involved. My name is Harry Highland, I'm 21 years old and this is the story of my journey up Mount Kilimanjaro on behalf of the MS Society. Today is the 19th of February and today is the day we leave the hotel. Uh, okay, so we've just arrived here at the Mount Kilimanjaro gate. by the toilets. By the Don't forget today, everyone's like getting on, everyone's enjoying themselves. It's a little bit difficult because of the rain and the, and the, and the foot. Um, we're probably halfway now, probably at 2,000 metres. Yeah, another few hours today. to get here. It's just been incredible, what an experience. We're all so sort of grateful and happy to be here. Tomorrow we climb a little bit higher and the altitude could start becoming a problem. We're at 3,000 now, no one's suffering as yet. But everyone's so friendly and everyone's chatty and everyone's got a story, everyone's got a reason why they're doing it. A few of the guys earlier are doing it for a children's charity. Um, some other people are doing it for cancer. But yeah, no, really, really good first day. <laughs> 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 I'm here today in Kings Heath, Birmingham, to sit in on an MS support group to find out a bit more about what the MS Society does for its members. Notice the difference in my leg, my right leg started to drag. My hands and feet were really cold. How long have you been in the wheelchair? About five, six years. Okay. And, and so it stopped you doing, obviously, things that you used to do. Doing, doing everything. My MS affects me from the waist down, so um, because I am predominantly spinal. MS, so I can no longer hardly walk, can't really stand at all for more than 60 seconds. It affects my right side predominantly, um, so walking is also a problem. I have carers in the morning, and I have carers um, in the evening, day wash, dress. The most embarrassing thing is washing, because you can't do it yourself. When I had to take medical retirement, I went into a very dark place psychologically um, and needed to find something else, basically. So, cutting a long story short, I came to one of the groups 
and discovered that actually mixing with people who've got MS, because which I'd never done before, um, was actually pretty okay. Yeah. Um, and is actually very supportive because for the first time you're talking to people that truly, truly understand what you're living with. Yeah. Groups like this coming out and doing arts and crafts, yeah. things like that really do help. And that's yeah. and so the MS Society lay on events like this. Yeah. And that is. Before that, I was in my house. Yeah. When you come out. Having a network around this is invaluable yeah. because it gives us all somewhere to go. Yeah, your family, your friends, they all love you and they all understand, but they don't get it. Yeah. Um, so I find the groups really supportive. Good morning and welcome to day number two of the climb. It's only a nine kilometre walk, um, but it's going to take about seven hours. We're only going about 700 metres uh, up today, but um, that's going to be enough. Come in, so the views have kind of got now. It's getting really steep, um, <laughs> which is uh, which is difficult. But it's really everyone's really enjoying it. Everyone's in really good spirits. Uh, we're just waiting here now for the rest of the group to catch up. We're at 3,800. It's been tough today, it's been tough. It's been a lot of it uphill. We've only really come about 700 meters up, um, but it's just been, it's been solid. It's been a real hard graft. I started struggling a little bit about half hour, 40 minutes ago. Had a bit of a headache, couldn't really, couldn't really breathe all that well. We, tomorrow we go to um, 4,400 meters. We go to a place called Lava Tower and then we come back down and we camp at 3,900 um, so we can acclimatise. Uh, but apparently tomorrow is tough um, and it's a long day as well. I think we're trekking for about 10 hours tomorrow. We're 3,800 metres up on Kilimanjaro and I've just been in the middle of some... We were dancing and singing. I've got some footage, I'll cut to it. It's absolutely incredible. <laughs> the most ridiculous thing you'll ever see. After speaking with the Birmingham MS support group a week ago, I have a real desire to find out more about what the MS Society does and what can be done to stop the disease. Andy Jarrett, a fundraiser from the MS Society, has agreed to talk to me over video call to explain a little bit more about MS and how to get involved. Thank you very much for joining me today, Andy. Pleasure, real pleasure. Thank you very, very much. No worries. Thank you. Um, so. So can you firstly just tell us a little bit about what MS, what MS does? Yeah, MS is a condition of the central nervous system. In very simple terms, and I'm a fundraiser, so I like simple terms, the body starts attacking itself. If you think about your central nervous system that connects your mind, your, your brain and your body together as a, as a hot water pipe, what happens is the insulation around the hot water pipe starts to fret so in the heating system you lose heat it becomes less efficient okay. in your central nervous system that insulation is called myelin so your body starts attacking itself and that myelin breaks down either on a permanent basis or on a temporary basis is there any connection sort of to how people develop it because it's not something people are generally born with yeah we, we, we don't know what causes 
is their mass. So we don't know whether people are born with MS or not, and it develops actually later in life and signs and symptoms come forward. So yes, there is a connection actually with you know, with genetics, yes. So are we any nearer finding a cure? Or I suppose if we don't know what causes it, it's difficult to, to do. Yeah, we are nearer and we're getting closer and closer to finding a cure for the condition. Good progress is actually being made with, with, with research in, you know, not with MS, but so we really, really, really can stop paying because we are at a very, very exciting time. Obviously, not everyone can can have afford the time or things to, to do challenges like Kilimanjaro, but there's there's other ways to get involved, isn't there? So, uh, what other ways can people get involved? People can get involved to give of their time, of their contacts, their expertise, their skills, and experience in so many different ways. One of our biggest fundraisers is called Cake Break, where we encourage people to actually stop and enjoy a piece of cake together, with either tea, coffee, or wine, whatever takes your fancy. So, bringing friends, family together socially for that. No excuses for, no, for, for everybody not to get involved in some shape or form, no matter how little or how much time you've got. Some people you know, get involved and take things on to celebrate a milestone hmm. birthday in their lives or a particular occasion or because somebody close to them has just been diagnosed and it's their way of saying, look, we want to be with you through that journey, which is very, very powerful. Yeah, no, definitely. But so just to, to end it, the, to, to end the call, it's positive, largely. Uh, positive for many, many people, and we need to together make sure that we get better outcomes for everybody affected by MS and get to find the cure and, to, you know, and together to stop MS. It's actually, <laughs> it's really hard. Which I know sounds really stupid, um, but it is really, really hard. The altitude is starting to get to a few people. It's been a really slow pace this morning, uh, but it's absolutely beautiful. I still feel okay, no headaches really and only short breath when you walk in, but that's natural. So, yeah, good start to the day. <laughs> yeah, just getting a bit headachey now and lack of energy. I mean, it's a real slow, really slow pace walking. But look at this view. Look at that. Absolutely staggering how beautiful that is. Um, 100 metres, 200 metres from the top, still in the clouds. So we are at uh, Lava Tower. This is 4600. Uh, we've been trekking about five hours, five and a half hours now. We've got some hot lunch up here now, uh, a bit of soup, and then I'm not sure what else, um, just to replenish all the salts and stuff. All the food here is really salty, it's really nice. Um, just replenishing everything that you sweat out. We left Lava Tower about half an hour ago. I'm starting to get headaches. I think it's quite bad here now. A little bit rough. It's hailing. What is going on? <laughs> Baranka Wall is just over there. That's where we're going to be climbing up tomorrow. Today or nine hours today, and I'm just exhausted. I'm, I'm just absolutely not good. And no amount of sort of training can ready you for that. It's actually, <laughs> it's really hard. 
which I know sounds really stupid. Um, but it is really, really hard. Just, I'm just shattered, just constantly shattered, and we've still got, got another full day of trekking tomorrow. And you have to re just remember why you're here. And I'm here because of my close connection through my granddad to the MS Society. It's the most amazing experience, and I'll never do anything like this ever again. And I've come home to central Bedfordshire to speak for the first time ever with my granddad about his personal struggle with MS over the last 50 years. So sort of how old were you when you got diagnosed? 29. And did it come as a bit of a shock or what was the... <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> yeah, absolute stopper. It started when I lost of eyesight. I was on a course in a room where there were a lot of ceiling lights. And I was sitting at the back of the castle. I had brilliant eyesight in those days. And I eventually found I couldn't see the blackboard at the front. It was all getting blurred. So I sat closer and closer and closer to the front where I was, I don't know, 10 feet from the board and I still couldn't see it. At which point I panicked and went to the optician thinking I must have some sort of eye inflammation of some sort. And he took one look in my eyes with his ops and myself and sent me straight to the hospital. You had, obviously you had a family, you were, it was quite a young family. What, Very you... young, I was terrified, yeah. yeah. I was, I was... It must be scary thinking. Absolutely, I thought we were definitely going to be up creek without a paddle, with mortgage to pay, three children basically and a wife. Yeah. And no chance of getting a job anywhere. I have attacks where you go downhill and the attack goes on and you're just going downhill until such time as it decides either by treatment of cortisone injections or whatever to level off and at that point you can then carry on very well and bit by bit it will climb back up but it never comes back to the level it started off at so over a prolonged period of time which is obviously evident in my case it gets bit by bit by bit by bit worse. So what is your eyesight? How would you best describe maybe what you can see, like, to me? Like? Uh, the nearest thing I can tell you is that everyone knows what an eyesight chart looks like. Mm -hmm. I can just about see the letter A at the top. Okay. My peripheral vision is fine. I can see all that. Yeah. But you put it in front of me and I stare at it, it disappears. So it's pretty bad, but it's, I can still walk and I don't get run over by cars or buses and things. And well, not yet. Not yet. Well, no, I won't, because <laughs> my, hear, my hearing's pretty good. You feel quite lucky then. Oh, know? totally lucky, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. People say occasionally to me, you know, I've, I've done very well, and, and I say it's got absolutely nothing to do with me, it's just about that it's happened. Yeah. There's, there's nothing one can, that's the biggest problem with MS. When, you have a problem, doesn't matter what your mental attitude is or whether how much you try, if it doesn't want to reform or, or work, it doesn't. And yet, when it does begin to work, you wonder why in the hell you couldn't have done it yesterday or the day before, whenever it was. Yeah. It's a most odd thing. Isn't it? Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure, for absolute us. pleasure. Yeah. And thank you very much for doing what you do. Thank you. Uh, come on, give me a Nicer. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs>
Okay, we've made it to the top of Baranka Wall. Uh, as the sun's come up, it's beautiful, it's really warm. Uh, we're at about 41, 4200 meters. Uh, that's Kilimanjaro, <laughs> that's the summit behind us. Everyone's in really high spirits and uh, really good mood. A little bit of breathlessness coming up, but that's to be expected at this height. It was quite a steep incline. Absolutely phenomenal. This has been the best day so far. It's still got a long way to go today, to be honest. Um, so, might not be saying that in <laughs> in five, six hours' time. Today's been tough. Energy levels are so depleted. Everyone's struggling now. Um, and this is the last stop for fresh water, so we've got to fill up whilst we're here. Just starting to feel a bit run down. Uh, we've got a lot of mouth ulcers. A bit of sore throat. Maybe another four hour trek after lunch. Um, some of it's been really steep today. Uh, but more interesting climbing than yesterday where it was just quite flat. Yeah, just feel a bit exhausted, just totally exhausted. Didn't sleep properly last night really. Just need to go and eat some food and that will give me more energy to, uh, to do this afternoon. But yeah, anyway, I need to go and eat. Um, just thought I'd catch up for, for now. walking now uh, 10 hours you're not 12 shattered absolutely shattered so close now but I'm just so tired just don't know if I can do it just need to remember why I'm here to push myself to the absolute extreme I'm so tired. It's been such a long day today. We're up at four and it's now four, so 12 hours. And we've literally just arrived in camp. It's cold. It's just started sort of snowing outside. Snowy rain. We're at 4,700 now. Um, um, yeah. I've lost my trail of thought, I'm so tired. We're up at 11. And we start trekking at midnight. I'm gonna go up there if it kills me, I think, and it, and it might. It really might. I haven't really experienced altitude sickness at all. Had a few headaches yesterday, so I started on my Diamox. And today that's really helped me. It's the toughest thing I've ever done. By an absolute country mile. But for now, I'm just going to sort of eat, rehydrate, and then sleep. Because I'm tired. One thing I didn't expect when climbing Mount Kilimanjaro was the physical strain it would have on my body, even after having trained for the trip for over a year. After speaking with my granddad and other people suffering with MS and having gone through such a physical challenge, I couldn't help but remember last summer's Paralympic Games, which saw Kadena Cox of Team GB win two gold medals in two different events, despite struggling with MS. 
One of the main side effects of MS is extreme tiredness and fatigue, which I felt for the first time in my entire life whilst climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. I managed to get in touch with Kadina and she agreed to talk to me about being a Paralympic sportswoman and how she refuses to let MS define her. How long have you been diagnosed? Uh, I was diagnosed in uh, September 2014. You've done like amazing things in that time. What, what made you want to go into like the athletics and the cycling? And... Um, I've always done athletics. Athletics is something I've done since the age of 14. And then I started playing around with the cycling um, and literally just on a walk bike and then someone said, oh, contact this person like, to see what he's saying. I yeah, basically had one testing session with the British cycling and the physiologist went to uh, the head coach and said he got to have her on programme and that was that. So can you describe what it was like to win sort of your medals last summer? To be honest, yeah, so my, my bronze medal I got first, I was happy with that. And then in British cycling they have a lot of kit that they use. So in we have what was called Rio kit, which is like... No, we don't have all the kit on until we go to Rio and it's all specialised kit that helps you go faster. Okay. Um, and obviously we tried that in holding camp and everyone else was flying like... Yeah. <laughs> when I say flying, I mean like going like a good half second quicker. Oh wow. And I was just about hitting PBs. So I was like, what the hell is going on? Like something's not quite right here. But yeah, I kind of just gave it everything. And then to cross the line and realise that I'd not only won, but I'd absolutely smashed the world record. It was relief that I'd done it and I'd gone as quick as I needed to and kind of achieved everything. I can't even comprehend what like the training process and everything that you must have gone through to sort of get to that point. When I look back now, I realise how intense it was because mm. um, I'm currently trying to balance doing my degree alongside doing training for the World Championships. Mm. I realised how much went into what I did last year because it was not just about the actual training but it was about the diet, the recovery, yeah. like how much downtime I was having and it all kind of added up to those performances whereas this year I've got so much going on that it's really hard to control that. And the recovery, does that, it must obviously take a little bit longer for like people with MS and neurological like issues. Yeah, obviously we get the added fatigue which is a bit of a nightmare. I just crack on with it. Have you got any ambitions to go into any other sort of sports? I want to do um, Tokyo, uh, get a gold medal in, obviously kind of retain the gold medal as I've got, and then go to um, 2022 um, Winter Games and do the bobsleigh. Oh wow. Get two gold medals in um, a summer and a winter game in the same cycle. It's so nice to talk to you like about this and just understand that for people out there who have MS or just being diagnosed, it's not like the end. It's not a death sentence, is what I say, and I'd hate to be defined by the condition. You just got to hold on to your character. That's it. Like you can't let the MS take control. Would you have like any advice for anyone, sort of, especially young people, I suppose, being diagnosed, but all people being diagnosed? If you could give anyone that advice, what what would it be? Just to keep doing what you're doing and what you enjoy, and you're gonna have to adapt it more time or not. But if you enjoy it, then find a way to be able to do it and still get some enjoyment out of it. Well, I really, really appreciate you talking to me. Thank you very, very much. No problem. And it's lovely to talk to you. And uh, good luck with it all. I hope you uh, manage to do the bobsleigh. I'll be cheering you on at home. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Cheers. All right. Let's see you later. Bye. That was mad. She's so cool. She's so cool. I was... <laughs> I was mad. Oh, it's just so inspiring. Yeah. I think. Today I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. It probably took us about nine hours to reach the actual summit. Uh, the air is so thin. At altitude it was just really difficult to breathe. Um, 
every step felt like it was just grueling and even like things that usually don't take up energy like drinking you'd be out of breath if you drank and walked at the same time or ate and walked at the same time Highest point in Africa. 